Another week and another hack. This time it's impact of the popular messaging app, Slack. In this video, I'll talk to you about how the hack happened, what the hackers stole, and how this could impact you in the future. Now, Slack is just the latest in a series of hacks over the last month or so that have come public where it's getting pretty bad. Specifically, we've got Slack, LastPass, and CircleCI. Stick around to the end because we're gonna cover some best practices that you can do on your accounts to keep them safe, even if hackers are attacking these companies directly. While you were out celebrating New Year's Eve, Slack decided to drop a blog post outlining a security update that talks about this most recent breach. Now, specifically, what we know is that on December 29th, Slack was notified of suspicious activity that was impacting their GitHub account. Slack is fairly vague in exactly what happened here, just saying that a number of Slack employee tokens were stolen and misused to gain access into the externally hosted GitHub repo. Now you're probably asking yourself, WTF does that mean? So let's break that down. So step one here is that the hacker has to send a phishing email to their target victim. That phishing email is going to contain a link to an impersonated website. That impersonated website is going to be one that the attacker is controlling. Now, when the user goes and logs into that, the attacker is going to allow those creds to go to the legitimate website. In this case, we'll say it's GitHub but the attacker's also going to get a copy of those credentials. If that application was set up with multi-factor authentication, this is where you're logging in with your username and your password with some other form of identity, typically some sort of app that you're gonna push a button on and verify that it's you, but this isn't the end of the world for the attacker. They can set this up so that that prompt is still received by that user. The user goes ahead and, and accesses it and logs in, and again, that's gonna go to the legitimate website, but the important thing here is that when that occurs and that MFA is validated, there's something called a session cookie that is created. This is essentially the ID badge for the user saying, hey, I have already authenticated, I am who I am, and all I need to access these resources moving forward is this session cookie. That cookie belongs in the browser because that's where these users are potentially going to be accessing that information from. Now, the attackers are getting this session cookie in addition to those usernames and passwords. So that session cookie for the attacker is the golden key to access all the other resources that are accessible from that login. In this case, it's likely the GitHub repositories that are containing all of Slack's code. If we go back to Slack's blog post around the attack, we can see that during their investigation, they identified that the attacker had downloaded private code repos on December 27th. Now, Slack goes on to say that none of the downloaded repos contain any customer data or means to access customer data or Slack's primary code base. This is important because if we look back to the last pass attack that happened last year, the attackers compromised the source code, which was likely hosted in some sort of repository, and they were able to pull out information that then facilitated future attacks against LastPass. The concern here is that, could these hackers be doing the same thing for Slack? And that's why Slack went out of their way to say, hey, there's nothing here that's going to lead to further access. Now, that's what they say, we obviously don't know for sure. So, the moral of the story here is, we should be really keeping a close eye on future attacks against Slack to see exactly what these attackers could be doing. So I told you I was gonna give you some advice on how to protect your accounts moving forward, and this is it. You really wanna make sure that you're investing in a FIDO2 compliant MFA factor. Now, this typically means some sort of hardware dongle that you would plug into your computer or just tap against your phone to highlight that not only is this you that is logging in with your username and password, but it's also something that you have physically. It looks like this. The long of short of it is right now, there really isn't any impact to any of Slack's customers that we're aware of, but we still wanna keep a vigilant eye out on this. 
Make sure that you're doing what you can to protect your access into your Slack accounts by using strong forms of MFA. And also make sure that you're just being vigilant for any phishing emails that might be coming in uh, that are talking about Slack or the Slack compromise. For hackers, they're never gonna let a good crisis go to waste. So they're gonna take advantage of anything that's in the news to try to trick you into doing something through social engineering, typically through some sort of phishing email. Most of security is about the basics. So take the precautions now, make sure that you're using MFA in front of any account that you have. And if you're not using a password manager today, take a look at this video where we'll talk about choosing a good password vault for you in 2023. Thanks for watching.